Welcome back to the Keg King channel. I'm Daniel. Today we're going to be doing a very basic extract kit, but we're going to pressure ferment it in a Keg King Fermenter King Junior. Junior fermenters are 20 liters, so we're going to make a little bit less than what we would normally with one of these extract kits. So instead of 23 liters, we'll maybe do somewhere around 16, 17, make a stronger beer, and it's going to be a little bit more fun. We're going to show you how easy it is to mix it and then get it into the fermenter and fermenting under pressure. What the benefit is to you, the brewer, is that instead of having to do bottling, you're going to easily be able to just drink straight out of the fermenter as if it's a keg. We can carbonate in here, we can drink straight out of it. So it saves you a little bit of time and gets you to the fun part, the drinking. So let's start this off. So welcome back to the Keg King channel, I'm Daniel. And if you like our content, go ahead and like and subscribe to the page, please, because uh, we're trying to help you guys to become better brewers, share our knowledge and our equipment, and we do hope you find these useful. So we're going to make a very basic extract beer today with just some extract tin and some uh, extra fermentables from this body booster, which is gonna give it a bit more body and uh, mouthfeel. Uh, so we're not gonna do anything too special with it, except we are going to pressure ferment. Now, a lot of new brewers don't realize that they can just jump right in and do pressure fermentation. And the benefits are that you're gonna finish a little bit faster, you're gonna have carbonated beer when you're done, and you can drink right out of it like a keg. So, if you want that, if that sounds cool, check out Fermenter King Jr. Because all this gear here is what you need, and most of it you already have. But when it comes to the pressure fermentation, I'll show you this first. This is what you're gonna need to get started to make this kit and ferment it under pressure. So let's start with the pressure fermenter. The pressure fermenter is, in this case, the Fermenter King Junior. Now, we sell these all over the world, and they look pretty much like this. So we don't wanna do any of the hot mixing in this. We're gonna move all the fermentables into this fermenter after they've cooled a little bit and mix them with the other water that we're gonna be using for brewing. And we're gonna let the pressure ferment happen in here. Our pressure fermenters have this Cornelius set up on the posts on the top. So it's got the same posts as a Bullock keg on top. So it makes it very easy to transfer things around in your Bullock breweries. So it also has a floating dip tube, which means when the sediment does drop out of this later on when we get it cold and carbonate, we can drink right out of it because we're gonna be drinking bright beer right off of the top. So you'll see all this. And if you're going to use these fermenters, you also need to get, instead of an airlock, a spunding device. In the case of our spunding devices for our fermenters, or whatever other fermenter you might be using, if you have a gas post, you might wanna use a spundy. Spundy is the most compact, tiniest little spunding valve that there is. You can set the pressure, which means the airlock that you would normally be using is a spunding valve when you use it on a pressure fermenter. That means that you're gonna control the gas that's made during fermentation holding some of the pressure in the fermenter itself and releasing the gas that's not unneeded for the fermentation. So that basically just sits right on top like that. And now we use this dial here to hold a temp or hold a pressure. And of course we have the gauge on the other side to make sure that we can hold about 10 PSI because today we're gonna to be making an ale. You'll also need a way to test and pull samples from your fermenter. So we would recommend a quickie uh, poppet depressing nib. All this does is it allows you to fill up your hydrometer and sample flasks because all it really is is a poppet depressor. So the liquid out that comes from the floating dip tube to get a sample, all you do is pop this on, push down and fill up your flask or a small uh, jar of some of your liquid so that you can find out what the gravity is of your fermentation. When you're cleaning up later on, you can use it when you take the sanitizer and move it up through the dip tube assembly so that you can clean out the entire fermenter. Super easy to use. So now that we've discussed the pressure fermentation equipment, which really isn't very much, um, you're gonna need the other equipment, which you probably already have. Now I would recommend some sort of funnel for being able to pour your fermentables into the pressure fermenter, makes it easy. So if you're sloshing it around, you can get it all in there. But you'll also probably need, and this is definitely recommended, sometimes kits have a pull tab on them where you can pull the lid straight off of them. But if they don't, you're gonna need the old fashioned can opener. You might also need a pair of scissors because we're gonna have to open up 
these extra fermentables that we're gonna add to this kit to give it a little bit more body and mouth feel and it will also help kind of give it a richer flavor. Now, I highly recommend having sanitizer on hand when you mix up. So we'll call this a brew day because we're gonna be putting together the fermentables that we are going to ferment. But since we don't have to actually brew anything with hot water and grain, it's all been done for us by the companies that make these extract kicks. So we still need though to protect all the surfaces with sanitizer. So we would recommend you get the Atomic 15 foaming sanitizer where you can find it because it's Australian made and it's awesome. But because also it kills microbial life that's living all around us and will infect your beer and make it taste really bad. So I also recommend getting a couple of spray bottles. In this case, this spray bottle has some of the Atomic 15 uh, sanitizer mixed into some water so we can spray surfaces and make sure that as we're working, we're keeping things sanitary. I'd recommend getting some 70% ethanol, food grade, that you can use to kill bacteria on surfaces as well. So the next thing I'd recommend doing is get yourself a large jug. In this case, this is a three liter jug. I put in about a liter and a half of like warmish hot water. Now take your extract tin, go ahead, pop off the lid. You'll find in this case that there is yeast under the lid. Now you can choose to use this or you can buy other yeast, whatever you want to do, it's your beer. But I'm going to go ahead and just use this yeast, which came with this pack, and we're going to ferment the beer with it. So in the meantime, you can keep this in a fridge is a really good place to keep it. I'm just going to put it off to the side right now. Like that. But the next thing I'm going to do is just go ahead and put this in here so that it can warm up in the warm water, just like that. So we'll leave that to get warm and it will also kind of loosen the syrup in there so it's easier to pour. So let's put this out of the way. So now that we've got the extract tin warming so that the syrup is easier to pour, um, the next thing you want to do is go ahead and throw some sanitizer into your pressure fermenter. So no matter what kind of fermenter you're going to do, make sure you sanitize before you put your fermentables into that fermenter. So let's get some sanitizer mixed up. I've got five liters of water right here. Go ahead and add it to your bucket to uh, properly dose that with Atomic 15 foaming sanitizer, you're gonna have to squeeze to this first line here, which is 7.5 mils. So there you go. You put your 7.5 mils into your five liters. And now, find your spoon or your mash paddle or your slotted spatula and give that a stir around so it mixes in. It needs 30 seconds of contact time to be able to do what it needs to do but also we're gonna put the funnel in there and we're gonna pour it into the fermenter. You can always just use your spray and get that up and down it. And it's only for the parts that are gonna be coming into contact with your fermentables that you need to worry about. All right, so go ahead and take the lid off of your pressure fermenter. You're gonna to have to take this off. You kind of don't have to, but might as well. And pull out the assembly put this to the side for right now. Pop in your funnel. So up it goes. We're going to pour it in. So I would again recommend any surface that you haven't had that um, sanitizer pass through. Just go ahead and give it a spray with your spray sanitizer as well. You don't need to use the ethanol for this portion of it. The foam is actually the surfactant that helps keep the sanitizer working when it contacts gross matter. The acid of this is what actually kills the bacterium. So even though that's not going to be completely filled, what we're going to do is seal it up, rock it around a little bit. So go ahead, pop back on the assembly with the floating dip tube and the lid. Put that nice and tight in place because we're going to shake this around a little bit. So make sure it gets on all the surfaces. Don't worry about the foam. We can knock that back with ethanol sanitizer. And we're gonna also draw a little bit of the sanitizer up through the dip tube assembly so that the inside of that dip tube is nice and clean. Super easy to do if you have a quickie. So I'll show you how to do that. So just grab the fermenter, use your fist or your palm if you need to, and just push down on the quickie and that will get the sanitizer to flow through. And then you know that you've got sanitizer up in the dip tube Cool, so that's basically your fermenter, nice and sanitized. We'll be all set to use this and fill it up after we pour the sanitizer out and drop back a bit of the foam. So let's get our fermentables all mixed up. 
So once you've tipped the sanitizer out of your bucket and cleaned everything around it, sorry, sanitized all the surfaces for the mixing bucket, go ahead, you can start opening your can of extract now. Uh, you've moved on the sanitizer into your fermenter, so now what you wanna do, after you've made sure that all the surfaces of what you're gonna mix into are nice and sanitized, go ahead and start adding it into the water. Now I've added another five liters of water into this bucket, and I'm gonna add the fermentables to that and mix them in. So you can use a bit of warm water for this if you want to, or even a little bit of hot water to mix it with, because we're gonna be adding it to cool water when we put it into the fermenter, you'll see. So when it comes to brewing water, the best brewing water is, let's say you take tank water or tap water or any of the water that you have access to that's clean, treated with boiling and then allowed to cool. That's the simplest way that you can do this in your own home or kitchen. So next step, go ahead, grab a little bit of sanitizer on the can opener, grab a little bit of sanitizer on the top of the can as well. Go ahead, open the can, remove the lid, you probably have some fermentables in there, but we're not gonna worry about them. And get this mixed in to your bucket. Make sure to scrape out the can. So you've got extra fermentables just sitting right there. If you have some access to some hot water, put some in the tin, rinse it out, make sure to get all the fermentables out of this and into your water. Next, find your bag of Booster Blend, which is gonna give it more mouthfeel, and then Sanitize the bag. Just give it a little spray. Sanitize your scissors. And then you go ahead and open this. That was already sanitized, scissors sanitized. In goes your sugar into these fermentables. Get it all in there. And now let's get that dissolving by giving it a stir. Make sure to keep stirring until you get all of it dissolved. You don't want any of these little chunks, right? You wanna make sure that those dissolve into the liquid as well. So your next step is gonna to be to get the sanitizer out of the fermenter, and that's very simple. Go ahead, take this out. Go ahead and put it in there. And again, you can give that a spray again. It's just come right out of sanitizer, so it should be absolutely fine. And now go ahead and pour this out. Don't worry about saving it if you don't want to, but you can save it and use it on other pieces of equipment as you run through the process. So now you've got the liquid out. If you wanna get the foam out, using just a little bit of that food grade ethanol will drop out the foam pretty easily. Just give it a couple of sprays, and that's it. And this just makes it easier that when you are filling, the foam doesn't start coming up at the surface and then starting to come out of the top of the fermenter. Cool. So in the case of this fermenter, you can see there still is a little bit of foam in there, but don't worry about that. It's not gonna harm the beer. Go ahead, locate your funnel again, and go ahead and drop that into place. This is also, of course, nice and sanitary. You've sprayed it down again, inside and out, wherever the beer might touch it, right? But the first thing we're gonna do before we put any of our warm stuff into the fermenter, we're gonna add 10 liters of water into this vessel. That's five. Very exciting stuff. So you got your 10 liters in there now. Now it's time to move our fermentables into the pressure fermenter. So when it's gonna mix with the cold water, it's gonna balance out the temperature a bit. And we're looking to try to hit a temperature close to around 18 degrees, 19, 20, somewhere in there is about right for this kit. So let's go ahead and get this mixed in. The temperature should balance out. You've already sanitized everything. All we do now is put in the fermentables. Here they go. Wish me luck. Wait. So there we've got just about 16 liters of wort at this point because we haven't put the yeast into it in our fermenter. I'd say the temperature, just gauging it, and we've got this little temperature probe, or probe, it's a temperature sticker on the side of it um, that kind of gives us a general idea. And it's saying it's someplace between 24 and 26, kind of, as I can see. 
So it's actually not too bad for temperature. Uh, we could pitch yeast now if we want to. Again, find your sanitizer. You can never have enough. Sanitize, sanitize, sanitize. Then, sanitize those scissors one more time. If I could, I'd sanitize my life. Now, try to shake down the yeast into the sachet so that it's down at the base because you're going to cut it open and you want every last little bit that you can get. The next thing is we got to get the lid back onto this thing. So go ahead, give it one last blast of sanitizer. You can sanitize your hand too if you need to. And now, let's go ahead, drop it into place. Just like that. Go ahead, let it get snug into the neck by pushing down like that. Move this uh, PRV ring that you can pull um, towards the posts and then go ahead and find your collar. Spin it into place. That holds the lid in place nice and tight with no leaks. Just like that. And that is it. You now have beer. So this will take a little while to ferment, and the only other thing we gotta do is put the spunding valve on it. So go ahead, locate your spunding valve, put it onto the gas post. Now make sure you put it on the gas post. If you put it on the liquid post, as the pressure builds up, all that's gonna happen is that all the liquid in here is gonna come spitting out of this. So put it on the gas post. That's what you're controlling is the gas output of this fermenter. The spunding valve is going to be able to control the gas that's in the fermenter and release the gas that's unneeded inside the fermenter. And I think what you'll find too is that it's a little bit easier to ferment even if you go a little bit warmer because it's going to reduce ester production being under pressure. Anyway, we're going to get this into a temp control chamber now. So congratulations, you've made beer and put it into a pressure fermenter. If you're doing this, you're already a step ahead in the game because this is purpose-built home brewery equipment that gives you a new level of control. Why did you want this pressure fermenter? It's because it's gonna do the job of pressure fermenting and carbonating at the end, and you can drink out of it at the end like a keg. So until next time, we're gonna get this one into a temp controlled chamber, hold about 18 degrees, and wait for it to turn into beer. We'll see you next time, brewers. Thanks for watching.